Believe it or not, you can still find a, a few signs of the Ixtox spill three decades later. Over the course of the next few nights, the glimpse into our future that spill may provide and why it was a missed opportunity in Mexico's blowout, lessons lost. You find spots everywhere. On the other side of the Yucatan, away from the popular Mexican vacation spots. Yep, it smells. Marine biologist Julio Sanchez discovers oil near the town of Champaton. Still glitters. It's practically gone. But this is a this is a very barren area. It's just rocks. Rocks could act as ovens, which heat up, and that probably helps a bit to to break it up. Astonishingly, oil that appears to be from 31 years ago. It's very resistant. It's unbelievable. On June 3rd, 1979, a giant column of gas shot up a pipe. A blowout preventer failed, and the Ixtoc One oil rig erupted. Crews hired by Mexico's national oil company, Pemex, scrambled to plug the gusher. Nothing worked until a relief well was drilled 10 months later. The whole uh, uh, Port Mansfield itself is centered around fishing. Texas fishing communities immediately sent out an SOS. The TV reporters of that day sound eerily familiar. No sooner had the boom gone in than it began to fail. Eventually, 170 miles of Texas coast got stained with oil, driven there by currents. So there was plenty of oil to share in all the Gulf. In the Yucatan, a few weeks after the spill, a north wind came up. A black tide of oil piled onto the Mexican shoreline. So we spent five weeks driving and checking out rocky shores, sandy beaches. Texas A&M researcher Wes Tunnel drove the entire coastline in the year after the spill from Corpus Christi to Mexico's Caribbean coast. Champotan stood out in my notes of this is the most oil that I found in the entire trip. Oh, there this one did. Test will have to confirm the source, but Tunnel is convinced the oil at Champaton, hardened like asphalt, is from Ixtoc 1. Back in 1979, the Mexican fisherman got no warning about the dramatic turn his life was about to take. All of a sudden, when they were fishing, the, the strings that they used were greasy, full of oil. Bernabe Pastrana was 35 at the time. One of those days when they, they arrived to the mangroves and tried to get off, it was knee high, the amount of oil in the, on the shore. All the oysters died. One species of oyster decimated by the spill has not recovered to this day. A UN report says fish and octopus catches dropped by as much as 70% in places hardest hit. Whole generations lost. They tried to get some, still some octopus. The octopus is on the bottom. It, it was still there, but once they pulled it up, it would get contaminated. So they said, well, no more fishing. There was no compensation fund for Mexican fishermen. Luis Felipe Delgado explains it was every man for himself. He says fishermen got a little money, barely enough for a week, then nothing. They lost their equipment because it got all messed up with the oil. They faced an immediate crisis of providing for their families, unable to fish for months. Because fishermen have their diet based mainly on fish food. Farther up the coast, there are still more signs of the Ixtag effects. In the tiny fishing village of Isla Arena, population a few hundred. In 1979, there were no roads to the island. So they were practically incommunicated. Nobody warned them. And when they probably had a holler very loud to get it some attention. Not much is recorded about what happened here, but several miles from the island, the mangrove trees tell a story if you listen. Uh, typically, you would see all of those branches of the red mangrove reaching out into the water, and you wouldn't see any gaps uh, in the area. And I kept seeing some small openings. Something was horribly wrong. You can see all the area here. 
In one of those openings, Julio Sanchez finds a mat of mystery oil. <laughs> Very Still get the smell of it. It's the same thing. That's it. Oh yeah, there's no mistaking it there. I mean, that's, that's petroleum. Smells like old railroad tracks. Yes. yes. <laughs> Nature broke down the vast majority of the Ixtoc oil years ago. But West Tunnel has been tracking oil in a third area for 30 years. As for this mysterious new find... I don't think it's any newer than 10 years. I think it's pretty old. And it could be as far back as 30 years. We're here in a, basically a mangrove forest. I guess it would be difficult to get in here and clean it up. You know, that would be practically impossible. At worst, the oil has a low-level environmental impact. You have to hunt for it. And in some ways, those who have studied the Gulf have been stunned by its recovery. Nature is so powerful that it tries to overcome all these damages that we do to it. Tests are being conducted on the oil we showed you to determine if, in fact, it is Ixtoc oil. There were a few other spills after Ixtoc. Over the course of the next couple of nights, we'll look closer at what they experienced in the lower Gulf and what it might mean for us in the months and the years ahead. And just the thought of oil possibly being there 30 years later I get, makes you wonder, is it all gloom and doom? No, not at all. In fact, to be honest with you, most of the story is, a, is and you will see this over the next couple of nights, is a, is a positive story about a, a system that bounced back after a couple of years. On oysters, it's kind of a split decision, and there's a little bit of a warning. I mean, every spill is different, and nobody can say, you know, what's going to happen with BP based on this or any other spill. All right. All right. Thanks a lot, John.